For the sake of the preachers that's on the road tonight or today, I will use for a subject or a topic or a thought for today that he's all that. Over the many years in, of this journey uh, in Jesus Christ, and I believe all of us have had to cross many paths and go different places and, and, and to just see uh, or call on the name of the Lord and feel his presence in our lives. So I'm reminded of several times or several trips, because certainly I've had my share of trips uh, to the doctor's office. And can you imagine sitting in there waiting for the results of whatever it is you went in there for the test? And a little stress may come over you. And if you like me and I like you, you'll say the words, Lord, help me. Give me a peace of mind or something. And certainly, if you've been sitting at the doctor's office and your appointment is at 2 o'clock, and they don't see you at 3.50 and you get out at 4 o'clock, you asking the Lord for some comfort. In those times, you're reminding yourself that he's all that. As a young man, not coming from much and not having much money, as a matter of fact, when I got married, I had more going out than I had coming in. I'm reminded during those times that he had to come in my life, and it reminded me of being a good financial specialist in my life. I'm reminded also of times when I first got married, didn't know how to be a good husband, didn't know how to be a good father, and certainly not a family man according to what the Bible says, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. Didn't know how to do that. But I called on the name of Jesus. Yeah. And he taught me through training how to be a good man, how to be a good father, Amen. how to be a good husband, all because of his word. But you had to call on his name. Amen. And I got news for you. Depending on where I am and what I'm doing in my life, occasionally I still have to call on him in terms of my finances to be that financial specialist. I still have to call on him to help me when I go to the doctor because sometimes I lose focus and allow him to calm my nerves. And most certainly I have to call on his name probably on a regular basis daily in teaching me how to be a good family man, a good husband, a good father to my kids. And so I remind myself often of what he is to me. And Isaiah, the ninth chapter of the Bible lets us know that he's a wonderful counselor. He's better than F. Lee Bailey, yeah. Oprah Winfrey, Dr. Oz, Dr. Phil, he's better than all of them. He provides sound counsel to those that are listening. The Bible says he's a mighty God. Now I'm reminded of a man named Omar Nelson Bradley. And I believe he was the last general to have five stars. Before he got his five stars, I know that there's a God that have all the stars. Amen. That put all the stars in the sky. Mm. So before he got his five, God was the top dog. The Bible says he's everlasting. Uh, he's everlasting. There's no end to his reign. Where he started at and where he ended at, no one can put a finger on him. And then the Bible says he's the Prince of Peace. He's able to calm storms. Okay, and so. certainly able to smooth the raging seas in my life. Yes, yes, yes. I stopped by to tell you that he's all that. Talk to right. him. Talk to him. Some might add that he's a bag of chips at the end of that. But he's all that. <laughs> all that. A wonderful counselor. Right. A mighty God. The Prince of Peace. The Everlasting Father. Anything that you want to put on. Wherever you have a need at. He's all that. Yes, he is. So since he's all that, I just want to ask you or kind of throw the thought in your mind, is there any room left for him to be anything else Mercy. other than a good doctor, a good lawyer, a good financial specialist, the family man of families, able to teach, guide, coach, counsel, and mentor? Well, the first point I want to drop in our hearts and our ears and our hearing today is, the Lord is my life. Yes, yes, yes. 
Now when we say that he's our life, what we're saying is we're submitted to him to be our leader and we are his followers. What we're saying is we're willing to submit to his full control. In the book of Judges, the 13th chapter and the 5th verse, I told you we'll kind of be in that book, Judges 13, 14, and 15. And I'm going to be talking about a familiar set of scriptures by a man named Samson. Now when Samson was born, the Bible alluded to that he would be with them and that uh, be with him and that he would be the leader that will lead the children of Israel out of Philistine. And God let him know that I'm going to be with you and that no razor shall come upon your head and you will have full strength. And in the 24th verse, in the 25th verse, the Bible said, as Samson grew in the Lord, the Lord blessed him. And then he said, the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times, that which further illustrates how God was his life. All right. Now the problem is, God initially starts out being our light, but sometimes we allow the light to go dim. See, God wants to be our light, and he wants us to grow in him, and the more we grow in him, the light gets brighter. All right, preacher. But occasionally, we take our eyes off the light, meaning God, and therefore the light begins to go dim. In the 14th chapter, in the first verse, it says, Samson went into the Philistine company of time. And the Bible says that he looked and saw a beautiful woman. Right then, the light began to go dim. See, God wants to be the light of our life. Our life, but guess what? Sometimes we take our focus off of him and we begin to look at the Philistines or look at what the devil got to offer and the light begins to dim Bless him, Bless in our life. Bless him. And so when he looked at her, the Bible said, in some verses it says, he beheld her and she was beautiful. Mercy. How many times have God provided something, given us direction, given us light, and given us a path to go? We have taken our eyes off the light and begin to look at the Philistine time. Mercy. Begin to look at the things that God has not designed for us to look at. My Lord, my Lord. It is then and only then do we lose our focus and then we can't do what God set out for us to do. And let me just drop this again. I'll just digress just for a second. And I won't belabor on this, but if you go down and read the second verse and the third verse of the 14th chapter, it says something to the effect that after Samson had saw this beautiful woman, the Bible said he asked his mother and father, can you go get her? And the mother and father said to him, son, is there anybody else in our camp that you want? Besides this Philistine woman, it is important that we surround ourselves by good counsel. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel, there is safety. A lot of times we like to fly off the handle and do what we want or take ourselves out of the light. But it's important that we surround ourselves around good people. Why? Because good people will say, son, is there anybody else that you can find inside the camp? Is there anybody else here? Is there anything else that you can do? in the church that you uh, that you can do that will keep you focused on God than going out there and hanging out in the nightclub on Friday night. Right. Is there anything else? Go ahead, break up. That's what sound counsel will do for you. Right. But when you don't listen to sound counsel and surround yourself around sound counsel, you'll do what Sam said. I don't care what you say, Mom and Dad. I want this first time woman. In other words, I want a dab and dab and a little bit of sin. That's what Taking your eyes off the light will do it. Go ahead, preacher. But we got to remember that God has given us a path. God has given us a light. God has given us a direction to go. And we got to stay focused with Him. Mercy. See, we got to know that the light is there, but we got to know that the light can be removed. Not because God removed it, it's because we kind of blind ourselves. In other words, have you ever heard somebody say the term? I'll do what I want to do when I want to, and ain't nobody else going to tell me what to do. That's taking your eyes off the light. All right, now, See, if I say to myself, it's, 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 it's an old saying that Ron said to us all the time. <coughs> if you got to do what you want to do, that means you're not doing what God said to do. I want to do versus what God wants me to do. Oh, yeah. Ain't nobody going to tell me what to do no more, because guess what? What you're really saying is you're operating in you and not operating in him. Take your eyes off the light. For I'm reminded in the book of Exodus, 
how the children of Israel was leaving out of Egypt. The Bible says he led them by a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And he led them by the light day and night. I can, I can imagine that when the cloud was moving, everybody was marching in unison, going the same direction. But when the cloud stopped, they all just kind of relaxed because they was in the Lord. And can you imagine them sitting there just like this? And then all of a sudden, the drums start beating. And when the drums start beating, they look up in the cloud and immediately they get to teach because they say, guess what? Something's about to happen. Now for those that imagine two of y'all sitting there at the same time, one person look up at the cloud because he can feel the spirit of the Lord getting ready to move, but the other person looking at him, man, what you doing? It's because he lost his life. God said he led them by light, a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Yes. In other words, he led them. Amen. They didn't get up and go by themselves. Bless him, bless him. And they kept their focus on God. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. He is our light. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says, the word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Yes, yes. As long as you got God's lamp with you, you can look down at your feet at any time, as dark as it want to be, look down, you can always see your, your reflection and his reflection right. when you got the lamp. But uh, when it says he makes a light into your path, he'll let you be able to see down the road. Mercy. And let you know that whether you need to turn left or turn right when you got his light. Mm -hmm. But see, when you got your own light, you'll turn left and he'll be going to the right. Mm -hmm. my Lord. The Lord is the light. The Lord is my light. Point number two. The Lord is my salvation. Yes, yes, yes. Bless the Lord. Mercy. When I think of being, think of him being my salvation, what I think of is his saving power, mercy. how he protects me, and how he secures me, mercy. even sometimes when I don't deserve it. Mm -hmm. His prevailing love is always there. Mercy. Look at the time in, in the 15th chapter of Judges, how... The Philistines, now, now I told you that Samson had married this Philistine woman. And so Samson was coming to retrieve his wife from the Philistine father. And the Philistine father had two daughters, so what he did was gave the oldest daughter to his best man when he got married. But when Samson came home, he came looking for his wife. And so Samson got a little mad. Now I'm wondering in my mind, why would he get mad? Because he didn't suppose to have that anyway. But he came looking for his wife, and when his father-in-law had gave away his wife to his best man, Samson got mad. And the Bible says that he caught 300 foxes, tied them up tail by tail, lit the tails uh, with fire, and let them go over all the camp rides and destroy all the crop. Have mercy. Don't you know the enemy going to get even with you if you go do something to him? He, he, he going to come and try to get back even with you. And so the problem is, the Philistines said, you know what? Where did this guy come from? And they knew he came from the Israelites, and they said, you know what? We're going to destroy everything, everything that the Israelites have for our possession. And the Israelites said, hey, why are you coming to destroy me? And they said, we haven't done anything. They said, well, we know that this guy Samson is in your camp. And if you don't give him to us, we're going to destroy everything you got. Mercy. Now, I'm getting to the, to the saving piece, but look here. Everything you got, we're going to destroy. Mercy. So guess what? The Bible says that the Israelites had purpose in their mind and said, you know what? And rather for us not to be destroyed, what we will do is we'll get sent it over. Look, look, it's either our property or him. Why should we save one person and be destroyed in the masses? We'll just give him over. And so when they went to him, Samson said, look, don't kill me. Just tie me up and turn me over to the Philistines. And here we are in the 15th chapter, in the 14th and the 15th verse. And it says, and Samson arrived in Lehi. This is after the Israelites turned him over to the Philistines. And Samson arrived, arrived in Lehi, and the Philistines came out shouting in triumph. But look at this. It said, the spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon Samson, and he snapped the ropes of his arms as if they were burnt strands of flax. Mm. And 
they fell from his wrist. And then he found the jawbones of a recently killed donkey and he picked it up and killed a thousand Philistines. Go Tell me God will protect you even when we make dumb mistakes. Yes, yes. God will save us. God will yes. protect us. Yes, and yes. God will secure us. Yes. Even when the enemy's on your trail. Amen. Amen. The Bible says the enemy will come and be like a flood, but he, the Spirit of the Lord, will raise up a standard. He will raise up a standard over the Philistines, over the enemies in our life. Yes. And he will protect us. Yes. Yes. To the point where, guess what? Every enemy that's in your life that's trying to do something to you, he'll cause you to grab a jawbone of a donkey and slay it. Bless him, Lord. Bless him. That's what God will do. Thank you. And he'll do it through you. Yes. <coughs> My Lord, talk to us. The problem you. is, I told you I present a story, but then I present a problem. <laughs> the problem is we forget that God is able to save and protect you. We forget about that. We begin to call on as soon as we get traumatic situations in our life, the first person we call instead of God is somebody local. But we should be giving God a phone call. We sing songs like call him up, tell him what you want. Obviously he must be available. He paid his phone bill. But sometimes we forget to call him and we call people. Yeah, but the Bible said, neither is there salvation in any other. You can't call on anybody else and get the protection, the 100%, 24 hours a day protection that God provides. Mercy. It's only in him. The Bible said, God has not appointed us unto wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, I would have all men to be saved and come unto the knowledge of truth. Yes. God does not want us to be lost. He does not want us to be left behind. Left behind, he does not want us to be out there without protection. Mercy. He didn't want Samson to be out there without protection. He wanted Samson to be protected. Sometimes we cross and go do other stuff other than what God wants us to do, and we leave that protective area. And it's, I remember what the Bible said, he'll give them over to a reprobate mind. Before that, God said he will protect them. It is us that walk away from the protection. It is us that walk away from his God, his life, and his salvation is us. Sometimes I'm still a child of God. Amen. Even when somebody tells me something, I'm still a child of God. Even when I feel bad and I fall on my face, I'm still a child of God. Amen. Because positionally, God sees me as holy. Amen. 